Hey, welcome back to Unity Empowered Ministries. I'm Jessica Bill, and this is my lovely co-minister, Felicia Reese. We are here today. Oh, please excuse the absence of Latoya Robinson Waters. She is not here with us today, but she is with us in spirit. On today, we are talking about the battlefield, but we're talking about the battlefield of depression on today. We are really not taking lightly to the fact that depression is contagious these days. A lot of people can slip easily into depression without knowing that they are depressed. And a lot of people feel like they don't need the help. A lot of people feel like they can get through this on their own. But I'm here to tell you, sis, I'm here to tell you, bro, it's not possible. You cannot get through depression on your own. You need the support of another human being. You need the heavenly holy father. You need a few things because it is literally a battlefield. Go ahead, Felicia. Tell them something you know about fighting depression. Well, can you hear me okay? Yes, ma'am. Well, the one thing that I know about fighting depression, you know, when it first started off with me, I was, I didn't know I was depressed. I was young and I didn't know I was depressed. And I was fighting against myself, not only just the diseases, but the get fight against myself. And mm -hmm. when you are depressed, you lash out at everybody in anger you begin to give people um, thoughts about you that are not true because actually as the years went on, I actually was still suffering from some avenues of depression because things were happening in my life that, that would not allow me to cope with it. So therefore, I began to develop other problems um, I just name a few. You know, I had the diabetes. I had to have blood pressure. I had uh, conversion disorder. That's what they say. And it, uh, my body instead of it, um, instead of it reacting normally, we we acted abnormally by attacking itself. And as I begin to learn, I, I I start telling myself, I don't need no help. I don't want nobody to help me. Forget you, I ain't crazy. I was thinking that it was a crazy thing, but it's not a crazy thing to be that you need help with your mental problems because a lot of us have them and we don't know. Like I said, I didn't know at first. But when I found out, I began to build on it in, in a way that um, I started to do the spiritual side of what am I dealing with? Why am I dealing with? And who am I dealing with? So the first thing I did was learn the spiritual side of it was that it was a demonic effect that I was dealing with. It wasn't myself. I knew it wasn't me because that was not how I behaved. You know, not wanting to go anywhere, not wanting to do nothing. That wasn't me not caring about my you know hygiene problems was kicking in too and that with the president you have hygiene problems with what i mean by that is that you you get up so that i ain't gonna brush my teeth i ain't gonna take no bath i know you need to take a bath deep down with me yeah. the will have you to the point where you cannot uh function normally the way you do and um you have um depression it, it takes a toll on you regardless of what people say uh it don't take a toll on your body yes it does it it it, it, it contributes to the diabetes the hypertrophy even though these diseases cause they all work together against you and i learned that interview was a demonic force. So I began to research how to kill it in the spirit realm, how to cope with it in the physically too, because believe it or not, physical and the spirit realm are real. You have to deal with it, kill it in the spirit realm before it manifests itself physically. I found that out the hard way. And um, 
um i began to ask god ask god what is this i'm dealing with it's not me i knew it was me and god began to show me avenues that i was going down was not what he wanted me to do and not where i was supposed to be i mean it's like i knew i wasn't supposed to be going down those avenues because they weren't good for me but i went down them anyway when you're dealing with depression it, it also make you feel alone and lonely and bored and just you just be out of it because you feel like people don't care people you know in when i did have my depression i just got through going through a depression but this time i knew how to deal with it but when i didn't know how to deal with it i was angry at people i was always crying and didn't know what, what to do i um began to say no the thing that I did was I began to say, no, I don't want to be like this. In my mind, my mindset had to change. That's what I found out. It had to change. It had to give way to that spirit, meaning it had to be opposite of that spirit. If you, I learned that down through the years as I've been dealing with this, it was just, just a spirit. It comes on you unknowingly and knowingly. Yeah, um, the things that you find out are up to you. Whether you want to stay in that rut or do you want to come out of it? I chose to come out of it, you know, even though the doctor say depression. I say, in the name of Jesus, I don't have depression. I'm, I'm cured because I know that God is a healer. And you Speaking cannot, yes, and you cannot go without, you know, through anything mentally by yourself. That's what I learned. Not even without God, not even without the spiritual, spiritual support. And I learned that it's okay to sit in therapy. It's okay to sit with somebody and talk with them. You're not crazy. It's just that you don't know how to channel those emotions, those feelings that you're having. And you gotta need somebody to help you climb out of there, so to speak. My thing was what was I went to scriptures because I knew that that was what I was brought up on. That was what I learned that could help me. So I said, Psalm 23 was my favorite verse that, yeah, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? I was you no know, evil for thou art with me. So I began to replace some of those words with later I walked through depression. I would not feel depression. For God is with me, and thy word thy step they come from me, that prepare to take before me in the front presence of my enemy. And when I start doing that and start it in the spirit, I begin to feel a little better about myself. Now, when I have what they call bouts of depression, or depression tries to come on me, I begin to kill it in the spirit room at the root. I rebuke you, I renounce you, I cast you out into the abyss in the middle of nowhere, onto dry land. I mean, you don't want to, I don't even want it to go to nobody else. And I bind it back up to the pits of hell where it came from. Because Jesus got said in, in, the, in the scriptures that he gave us power over our inner and the authority to travel over the snakes and the scorpions. Meaning that those tormenting and those, those tormenting spirits, those spirits that that wants to wrap your, themselves around you and squeeze the life out of you till you are no more. They cannot do it when you take authority. What I do now is I take authority over that, that particular spirit and let it know, hey, you don't have no control. God is in control. I'm not even in control, God is. See, sometimes 
it, you know, facing uh, us, we we facing you is the main thing that you have to get together because you can't get it and help anybody else if you ain't together. So what I did was start facing myself, which was some of it was hurtful, some of it was 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 like, no, that wasn't me. If, and then it, the God was like, yes, it was you. <laughs> Who you think I'm talking to? I'm not talking to air. So I began to say, okay, God, if it was me, it was me. Okay, I admit it. I own up to it. When I begin to own up to it, I, I begin to learn other avenues that the, I would say the spirit of depression brought forth. One of them was pride. One one was anger. The other was rejection. I used to be so scared of being rejected. I I used to look to man for validation. And I don't know more because the thing of it is that to, to show yourself approved of it uh, working need not be ashamed, right? Need to violate the word of truth. And that's me. I don't seek man for validation. God is my validator. Um, when I um, begin to let go and let God, I begin to be depressed and less. And right now, oh, it's been a, well, I'm not going to say this. You're not going to have no setback. Because I'd be lying if I say you won't. The only way that you won't have setbacks if the key word here is focus. Focus on what you want your life to be like. Do you want your life to be in that, that drag and root all the time? Do you want to face depression every way you face, every way you go? Do you want to be loaded with anger? And my answer to those questions are no. I want to be free. And being set free from depression is a great thing because it's like a whole weight been lifted off your shoulder. And um, excuse me. And as far as uh, pride was concerned, I was so proud I didn't want nobody to know I was depressed. I didn't want to even go sleep before the therapist. I didn't want my family to know because I said they all gone call me crazy. They're going to think I'm crazy. Come to find out what I did open up to them and let them know what was going on. They were going through the same thing. So God said, you you either go towards me or you're going from me. Which one you want to do? And I said, I'm coming to you because I can't do this on my own. He said, by the time you realize it. And so over the years and recently, God has been working with me and telling me, hey, these are a number of strongholds spirits, and you got to be able to conquer those strongholds. And I said, well, how can I conquer? He said, by faith, you will conquer it all. By Jesus' strike, you will heal. And I said, well, God, um, what to do? Jesus, Jesus, uh, seemed like he was perfect. He said, Nobody's perfect but the Father. It's nothing you can do about your earthly being but trust in me. And I was like, Okay, God. And so, um, when I began to trust him more, I had trust issues too. That's another thing come with depression trust issues. You don't trust anybody to do anything for you. I um I uh eventually over the years depression has got me so bad that I was having stroke after stroke after stroke, illness after illness. Didn't know why I was having it. Come to find out it was the depression, the diarrhea, and high blood pressure that caused all it. And um this time around when I had the stroke, God said, take up your bed and walk. That's what I heard in the spirit. I got to put my bed and walk, but I was still within myself saying, 
God, I'm like this. And you still want me to show you? He he brought up the story of Moses. He brought up the story of Aaron. He brought up the story of a lot of people he was with in the Bible who could not speak properly or who had ailments. Nobody was perfect. And I, I said, God, I said, I'm willing to go and do what you want me to do, not knowing I was headed in the right direction. Because I was asking God, question, am I headed in the right direction or not? And of course, I would get an answer like, what you think? <laughs> so I'm telling you all this, that depression is real, but it's up to you if you're going to let it control you or let God take control of that spirit that's trying to control you. Because God, innocence are not of God, they're of the devil. The devil only wants you to sit in that rut that you are in. He wants you to continue to sit there and to sit there and to sit there until he's he going to sift you as weak until you give in totally to the devil. Uh, he ain't gonna leave you alone. He never leave you alone because he don't like the fact that you are serving Jehovah God. But I won't put them on notice and keep them on notice and let them know that I choose to serve Jehovah God. You will throw whatever you want at me. I mean, nowadays when when those evil spirits come to me, those evil thoughts, I learn how to cast them down. I learned how to speak God's word and speak it into existence. Like, for example, the, the depression had me thinking, oh, you're not worthy to live. And the scripture that came to mind was, you shall live and not die. I said, thank you, Lord. I shall live and not die. I begin to say it out loud and the spirit left me alone. And before then, I was saying, I ain't worthy to leave. I tried to kill myself about two or three times. This was over the years. But God saw fit that I was here, that I'm here now to tell my story. And hopefully my story will help you too. Because just because you are depressed, you enter the depression, doesn't mean that you have to stay there. Just because you let me know my time is up. <laughs> Well, I think you've said a lot. And honestly, you don't finish the broadcast. We were shutting it down. It's like I'm just playing. <laughs> you covered a lot of important gems. Um, you know, we a lot of people always say that depression isn't spiritual. Everything ain't spiritual. And I always say this. I'm going to forever say this. I'm going to continue to say this. We were spiritual beings before we was placed in our mother's womb. When we die and leave this place, we're going back into the spirit. And so how can you sit there and say that things that we go through are not spiritual? <laughs> That's not true. Bless you. So back to what you were saying, right? Mm -hmm. I can't seem to shake this depression. Help. When One important thing that you said, when it came on you, that spirit came on you, and it said that you should die. And you said, I shall not die, I shall live. That's scripture. It's embedded in your spirit. It's embedded in your heart. And God said that I will write my word upon your heart. Mm -hmm. A lot of people really do not want to believe that depression is spiritual. And yeah, we're going to go into some physical coping mechanisms and physical things that can help you as well. But I, I mean, are we going to accept the fact that we do need to address this spiritually as well? That is just as important as those other things that you can think of. Medicine only, literally, is temporarily. It sustains you for a moment or two. It, or, or it takes away your consciousness where you're just faded out off of these meds. Meanwhile, life is still going on and you want to live. Mm -hmm. And so you have to really decide, how am I going to fight this thing? Like she said, she had to go into the spirit. She said, I started binding, casting, and rebuking. I hear you. But for those who don't know how to do that, do you at least pray? And this is the one thing that the Father has placed on my spirit. 
I worked 12 and a half hour shift. And he said, look, I need you to get on here and I need you to talk to these people. And I said, Lord, what is it that you want me to say? I'm tired. I got bags under my eyes. I look a little crazy. I'm hungry. He said, I need you to ask them, do they believe? And of course, I know what that means. And I'm more than certain you know what that means. But we really have to literally sit here and analyze what the father meant when he asked that. Do they believe? When you really sit there and you literally learn how to create a lifestyle, even if it's five or 10 minutes a day on scriptures, if depression is your biggest battle, go and research scriptures for depression. And when you do that, you'll come across scriptures that will tell you, like she said, I shall live and not die. Do you believe God's word? Do you believe God can save you from this depression? Do you have faith that things can get better? Do you believe God? When you read the scripture, do you do you read it with an open mind and an open heart? Do you cry out and surrender your will for God's will for your life? Because sometimes, just sometimes, God will watch us suffer. Literally, because that's not what he wanted for us. We are sitting in the space and a place that God is saying, that's not what I wanted for you. That's not my will for you. You know what a will and testament is? When somebody died, they leave a will. That's not my will for you. Romans 12 and 2. Romans 12 and 2. It talks to us about not being conformed to this world. I feel strongly that there is somebody in this group that is literally hung over by their desires and how certain things hasn't happened for them just yet. Just yet. And I speak into existence just yet because it will be done. God can do it. But are you looking at the wrong things? Romans 12 and 2, and it states KJV version. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect of God's will. Basically, it's the, God not saying you can't have the things that your heart desire. He said, first change your, your mind need to be renewed. The matters, the true matters of your heart that does honor God, he's going to give you anyway, especially if it glorifies him. But have you worked twice as hard to renew your mind? Because that's where the battle was at. In our head, the depression starts from a thought. She said, I forgot what you, rejection. That was a big one. I have that too. I'm going to say had. Because my thing is, I hate the spirit of rejection because I want everyone to love me. And so I put up with things that I don't deserve. People trash talk me. People don't trust me. People do me wrong. They use me for certain things. And I know it. And I still allow it to happen because I don't want to be rejected. I know that one day they'll truly see me for who I am in my heart. But in the meantime, I'm going to take that pain on with me. It's just going to punch me in my face. So it's just going to do it. Because at the end of the day, I don't deserve it. But I take it because I'm afraid of being rejected. And so we spoke about that spirit of rejection. She spoke about an incident that happened where she felt the spirit of rejection. But how do I identify my triggers when I feel depression coming on me? Think about what was the last thing that was said? What was your last thought? What was the last thing that you tried to do? And when you come to that conclusion, then you think on those things that are good. If what I just thought of made me feel uncomfortable in my spirit, then I need to stay away from that thing. If what I just felt made me feel uncomfortable in my spirit, then I need to evaluate, is it me? This is why we cannot do things on our own. I don't need no help. Really? You do. Because God says, you must have a clean heart and clean hands. You Sometimes it's hard for us to see our own faults. But even if it's not us and it's something that took place, we have to evaluate our emotions as to why we keep slipping into depression. 
what leeway am I giving this spiritual being, this entity, this demon? What leeway am I giving them to come and manifest itself onto me, to come into my spirit and influence my thoughts, to make me think that I don't believe God? For me, when I was in a place of depression, I didn't believe God. I knew what God wanted from me. I knew what he told me, but I'm like, God is taking too long and I'm trying this and I'm trying that, but nothing is coming through for me. And in my subconscious mind, meaning it's not in my conscious mind, it's in my subconscious mind, it's in the back of my thoughts. And what's in the back of your thoughts is in your soul, it's in your spirit. And so in my subconscious mind, I didn't believe God consciously. I'm going on every day. And I'm, I'm living life and I'm doing what I need to do. But as I'm waiting on God to move for me and I don't see nothing happen in the back of my mind, I stop believing God. I told myself, you know what? Maybe this, maybe I heard God wrong. Maybe what it is that God said to me, maybe, maybe, maybe it ain't going to happen. Maybe he changed his mind. You know, the enemy started putting so many things in your mind to make you feel that it's not going to work. But when you identify the tools, the tactics, and the, and the devices that the enemy used, you could dismantle it. You don't want me to believe? I'm going to believe you. If God already told me this and it's taking too long, you know what? The last time when I first started out and I believed God, where I was able to sustain a long amount of time believing God, what did I do then that I'm no longer doing now? The Bible tells us that we gain our strength from the word of God. So what am I putting in my body? For myself, I wanted to get married so bad. And I'm like, God, I know I ain't ugly. I got a lot going for myself. I, I'm doing this and I'm doing that. And, and, and I, I ain't one of them. Whatever that means. People say that all day. I ain't one of them. Where's my husband? But then I started to feel like, well, there's some things that God is still dealing with me every day. Even just waiting on my husband. But I made excuses. God, I want my husband because we got a lot of work to do. I need to be able to share this Lord with him. And he, 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 could, he could give me some advice on certain things. You know, we're working for the kingdom. And God said, yeah. But there's certain things I need you to take care of by yourself. Because there's certain things that the enemy try to come in the minds and the hearts of my children. And it will cause for you to, to astray because the enemy start planting certain seeds. So I need you to handle certain things for me so there'll be no bumpy roads when you first start off and get married. So I said, you know what, God, you're right. But before I said you're right, I was like, I don't want to get married no more. <laughs> but it was my own desires that I was looking at. I wasn't looking at what God was doing to me. I was looking at what it was that I wanted. And the Holy Spirit is telling me now to go to the video. We have a seven minute video and I pray that you stay with us because literally the one thing that made sense for me in life was literally when I found out that everything that we go through today was already done in the Bible. And we all know the Bible was created way before we were born, right? And so if what we're going through today was already done in the Bible, then that means that there's an answer. What would Jesus do? What did the prophet do in the Bible? What did the apostle do in the Bible? What was God's point? What was his purpose? Why is it that I'm stuck when I know that there's a way out because the Lord wrote it for us? When he gave up his body and he sacrificed himself on that cross, he had already overcame everything in the world. So let's revisit. Let's revisit a small portion of when Elijah did not believe God. And it's sad to say that he didn't believe God. But don't we all go through those things? Don't we all get there at some point? Let's see what happened. Seven minutes, y'all. Don't go nowhere. Life is a continuous chain of choices. Twenty nine hundred years ago.
Ahab, the king of North Israel, married Jezebel, who was from a Gentile nation. King Ahab, along with Jezebel, advocated idolatry. And it spread throughout Israel, the nation of God. Like a lover, God loved human beings. So he was utterly heartbroken, seeing his people not loving him, but instead serving idols. Thus, God sent prophet Elijah to King Ahab. You and the Israelites, stop worshipping idols! Otherwise, there will be neither dew nor rain for several years. It turned out exactly as he had said. Israel was hit by a terrible drought, and they didn't have rain for years. King Ahab was outraged and commanded his men to capture and kill Elijah. God said, to Elijah. Hide in the Kerith Ravine near Jordan. I have directed the ravens to supply you with food there. So Elijah did what God had told him, hiding himself by the Kerith Ravine. However, it was not the ravens that carried and supplied him with food. Far from calling and seeking God, the Israelites served the idols even more frantically as the severe drought ensued. Every morning and evening, people brought bread and meat as food offerings to the idols. The idol worshippers were people separated from God, so they were spiritually dead. In this way, God likened them to ravens, which symbolize death. Elijah ate the bread and meat. But it was heart-wrenching for a man of God to eat the food sacrifices. Even so, he had to live on. Because Elijah was the only one left to preach God's word and save the people. He was resolute. Certainly cast out these idols and restore God's nation. Three and a half years later, in front of King Ahab and all the people of Israel, Elijah challenged 850 prophets of the idols. People, 
How long will you waver between two opinions? Is it Baal or Jehovah God? Make up your mind. Offered bowls on the altar, having decided that whichever god answered their request for fire would be the true god. Fail! Answer all! They shouted, danced around the altar, and slashed themselves with swords and spears, as was their custom. But even when evening came, Nothing had happened at all. However, when Elijah prayed, fire fell from heaven and burned up the entire sacrifice on the altar. All the people saw this and realized that Jehovah is God. Therefore, they abandoned the idols and turned their hearts back to the true God. Which would you choose? I know for some people, they really do not understand scripture, but we try to get visuals so that you can understand um, a little bit more and so you will be able to um, be inspired luke 12 and 25 says can all your worries add a single moment to your life philippians 4 and 6 says do not be anxious about anything but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving Present your request to God. Thanksgiving is a posture. It's when you are happy, when you are open in your mind and your heart to whatever God's will truly is. Baal was a deity. He's a demon that worked for the devil. And basically, Baal would give you the okay to not believe in God, to believe in a God, but not Jehovah God. To believe that there is a God, but not a holy. And so when you continue to live, Bill, he continues to influence your emotions. This is why God said, be not conformed of this world. When we get attached to too many things, whether it's a husband, whether it's a car, whether it's a house, whatever it is then we are opting out of believing that God can provide for us. We are opting out of waiting on God. We are opting out of trusting God. And our relationship individually with the Lord is a covenant. It's a relationship. Can you imagine your mate, your husband, or your child carrying on like they don't trust you? Saying that they're they, they, they going to wait on you and that they know you got them, but you know in the back of their mind they really don't trust you. How would you feel? You know in the back of their mind they want to take matters into their own hand and go do something else that really God didn't tell them to do. And God distinctively said, wait for me. First Peter 5 and 7 says, give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about you. And so when we cast all our cares on the Lord, guess what happens? The enemy can't play with our emotions. 
about those things we truly desire. God said he will give us all the matters of our heart. When we sit in depression, we really got to ask ourselves, what really is depression? What am I doing here? Like Felicia said, I know I don't behave like this. When you're in depression, some of the experiences you go through is sadness, deep sadness. Like Elijah, he was sad because he knew that God can, that God is powerful, that he is the almighty. But the people didn't want to listen. He had to do some things he didn't really want to do, and it took him out of his element. And so he chose to no longer really believe God. I mean, come on. He didn't give up on God. He didn't forsake God. He didn't turn his back on God. But he started to carry on and act in his mind, body, and spirit that all was lost. And it wasn't. God always provides, but he comes at his time, not our time. And oftentimes, whenever God waited for me, it was to reflect some things that was in me that needed to change. It was to reflect some things that was in me, um, whether it was a bad thing or a good thing. Like me having a, a, a fear of rejection and basically sacrificing myself to people and not him. Although that was a good quality that I had because I'm a good person, it was still a bad characteristic that I had. You know how they say, if you don't stand for something, you fall for anything. And I believe that that is really true. And in those moments, you're adding more pain to yourself, more fury, more strife. Sadness is one of the things, a loss of interest in life or things. Some people go through depression. They don't want to work. Like Felicia said, they don't want to shower. They don't want to eat. Your sleep patterns change. Your energy change. All of these things are an influence of your emotions. You know, one thing that God said to me on today for today's uh, encouragement, word of encouragement. His question was that he wanted me to ask you guys, what is the purpose of depression? Can you answer that, Felicia? Because I don't want to just go on and give it away. I know you know. Yeah, I can, yes, of course I can answer that. Forgive the noise in the background and somebody like cringe. So, but the purpose you said, what is the purpose of depression? Well, my answer to that, it has no purpose when you learn what you're dealing with. But when you don't know, it has a purpose to keep you sad, keep you stronghold, keep you hoping for less, hopeless, keep you in a bondage. That's what we're going to call the bondage, because it is about mental bondage. It begins to, um, I'll say, do like the python spirit, wrap itself around your teeth, squeeze you the life out of you. But once you realize and you know what you're dealing with, you begin to know is you got to kill it at the root spiritually and then when it, if it tries to come physically, you got to learn how to deal with it physically. Physically, you deal with it by getting help, getting that support. Um, so what people call you crazy, you couldn't help you need. They may need more help than you. Um, the spiritual aspect of it is when these Thoughts come to you, or when this depression tries to come upon you, you begin to realize, hey, look, God, look, I'm God's child. I don't belong to the devil. I belong to the hope of God because he created me. He knows what's, what I'm supposed to be like. He knows how my body's supposed to function. You have people now, you know, have people, I have seen people where they didn't physically know how to cope with it. They literally let it get to them. And like I said before, the main thing is to focus. Focus on what you want. Focus on changing you, your mindset specifically, because the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spirits and spirits principalities in high places mm -hmm. that means that 
we constantly fighting against spiritual fight against things every day because they are going to continue to put them before you because he don't want you to know the power that you have from Jehovah God within yourself. He don't want you to know, to know it physically or spiritually. He wants you to always be down. Uh, but the purpose of that physically is to keep you down, to keep you unfocused. But the spiritual focus on the, the purpose of that is that it keeps you spiritually depressed. You deal with the same thing spiritually that you deal with physically. So like I said before, you have to be able to or be equipped to kill it in the spirit realm before it manifests itself in the flesh. That's all I'm going to say on it. <laughs> like she said, to sum up all that she said, which she was right, is depression is after your faith. The Bible tells us without faith is impossible to please God. So it's after your faith. So it attacks your spirit and influences your emotions. It wants you to not believe God. You remember in a movie clip when Elijah was on the ground and he banged his hands on the ground? He was in a place of disbelief. Like, I cannot believe this is happening. I cannot believe I'm going through this. And then something in you just shuts down. It shuts down. It, it clicks off. And subconsciously, you no longer believe God. You have to take matters into your own hand instead of just waiting on God and staying high in your faith. Depression is truly after our faith. When we understand that, then we know how to dismantle it. We know how to stay strong in the faith. We know how to believe God. And you do that by praying, by reading the Bible, worshiping. I've never had a day when I worship and it didn't break every sad thing that was in me. Whenever I worship and I cry out to God, everything breaks. There's never been a day that it did. First John chapter four, verse four, King James Version said, Ye are of God, little children. We were created to be of light, to be happy, to be joyful. God doesn't have any worries because he's the all-knowing. We were created in his image. It says, ye are of God, little children. It has overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Shift your focus. Shift your focus. When you are depressed, shift your focus. So we're going to spend the rest of these remainder of 10 minutes. And we're going to talk about, which I wish we should have spent more time talking about this. But well, we're going to talk about some coping mechanisms. How do I shake this thing? For me, I'm going to start off and then I'll let Felicia give you her perspective. For one, you first and foremost, you got to be honest with yourself. You have to be honest with yourself and open. Yeah, Felicia said we're going to have to do a part two. <laughs> you have to be honest with yourself and open. How long do you got, Felicia? You're muted. Um, My apartment is not until two. Okay. So, so we're wrapping up. Five or ten minutes. Yep, that's all we got left. <laughs> all right. And so <laughs> the first thing you need to do is to be honest with yourself and open about your mental health, your emotions, the things that's on your mind, the things you want to do. Get it out. Don't keep it in. Because when you keep it in, the enemy, he will sit there and run it over and over in your mind until it literally just cultivates your entire day, your week, your month, your year. Because you'll be hung up on this one thing. When you let it go and release it to God, then you give it to his hands. Cast all your cares on me. We just read that scripture. The next thing that I want to talk about was hotlines. If you feel like you don't have a friend, because my I wrote down hotlines and friends. If you don't have a friend that you can trust, call a hotline. Get it off of your chest. Get it out of your spirit so that you can move on. Something that is not spoken on, 
you're not given a chance to release it. So you have to tell, even if it's being honest with the person that that is is dealing with, be honest. Get it off your chest. Because from there, guess what you could do? You can move on. The other thing that I wrote down was arts and crafts. For me, I like to create stuff. I like to design stuff. Some people like the right song. Some people like the color. Some people like to draw. Um, I created some Crocs the other day. <laughs> You know, when you do the designs on the crops, um, I sometimes I paint my house. Uh, do things that takes your mind off of it, of the things that you expect to happen or that you're in disbelief about. And give God some time to work on those things. Pray, fast, worship. If you don't know how to release it to God, pray and ask him to help you release it to him. And he'll help you. It'll just happen. And you'll be like, wow, that's how I do that, huh? And then you'll be up here with us. Help the next person. Praise God. Um, the other thing that I wrote, which is this is the one before the last, is do little things that are of self-love. For me, when I'm going through a low place and I feel like, you know, discouraged before it even um, reaches a depression stage, when I just feel discouraged, I take long baths with some Epsom salt and I get out and I literally lotion myself from top to bottom. Because sometimes that self-love and nourishing and nurturing yourself, it literally replenishes your body. And so now you can relax in that space and shift your focus. And when you do that, you're able to be replenished. You're able to start over and let go. The last thing I wrote down was reevaluate your influences and your desires and accept and redirect reevaluate your influences what are you watching what are you putting into your spirit who are you looking at why are you looking at them and what they got going on because everybody has a season is somebody telling you that you need to do something that is not within your means then don't worry about it release it to god it ain't meant for you to do it right now but everybody has a season keep it up in prayer fast worship Get that thing up off you. Shift your focus. And I keep saying that. I feel like that's going to be our next. <laughs> Shift your focus. Because the things that you keep in the forefront of your mind, in your consciousness, those are the things that control you and it runs your day, it runs your life, it runs your emotion, it runs your faith and your hope. Because what you look forward to takes space in your mind, your body, and your spirit. Accept the things that you can't change. Surrender it onto God, the serenity prayer, and then shift your focus. At this time, I'm going to pass it over to Felicia. We've got eight minutes left um, to, so she can share some of her coping mechanisms with you all. Well, some of my coping mechanisms are, uh, she said some of them already, but the, the thing about it, for the coping mechanism, I had to first, like Jessica said, acknowledge it, own up to it, be honest with myself. Girl, you're going to do this, but why you can't shake it? Why are you going through it? Who made you go through it? And and what I I learned was that you go through it. Or unknowingly, because of your mindset at the time that you're going through the thing, either you don't know how to cope with it, or you don't want to cope with it, or you just don't want to be bothered. And that was probably one of my things that I was dealing with. And the thing that I cope when I get depressed, the, I watch a movie. Now, uh, some movies I can watch and now I can sit before analyzing spiritual, but I used to couldn't analyze them spiritually. <laughs> but uh, I watch a movie, I'll go walking, I'll um, read my word. I'll, you know, sometimes I talk to my therapist, you know, to get it, like she said, to get it all out. Because you cannot hold that in. You must not hold that in because it's going to eat at you. 
And the more you hold it in, the more it begins to eat at you, begins to make you angry, begins to make you sad, or whatever, because you are allowing this to come upon you in that way. And like, you know, not knowing, and knowing is totally different. When you don't know, you just don't know you get to get under somebody that knows. That's why you need the help, because you get under somebody that knows how to tell you out of that something that you don't know how to tell yourself out of. And um, as far as like coping with life, I learned to leave things alone that I could not change, stop trying to control things that I could not control because at the end of the day, like for example, change. I was trying to change people, but at the end of the day, it's up to that person to change. It's up to that individual how they want to change, when they want to change, what they want to do about it. If they want, they want to, you gave them advice, you gave them mechanism, and they don't want to take heed to it, and then you can do, do like they did in the Bible. Tell the word, keep going. My take on this is that when you're going through the pressure, know that you are not alone. You're not in it by yourself. You're not you most of the time you didn't put yourself there you just got there unknowingly and when you begin to know what you're dealing with apply those um things to your life to help you cope with it because i know if i had not applied my spiritual support i don't know where i would be i have spiritual support and I and and think and some people in my life that wouldn't tell me, hey, look, you don't need to be out there. We we're not gonna let you stay like that. And you you do need that person to drive you to the point to say, hey, look, come out of the depression. It's time for you to come out because that's not you. You need somebody. Sometimes you need that person to that's going to be straightforward to you and that's not going to baby you. Because we cannot baby these spirits. They don't baby you. Why you going to baby them? Get them at the root. Let them, don't let them grow. Dissolve them. Destroy them. It's a must. Because it's going to do He says your spirit as well as your physical body. I'm finished. Well, that was definitely powerful as always. Like she said, you can't be baby. You need somebody that's going to push you until you have no other choice but to respond and deal with the situation. You are in full authority over your mind, body, and spirit because God gave you that power because we are all God's children. But it's up to you to stand in that power. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Father God, for another day, Father God, another day to just sit at your feet, Father God, and meditate on your word, Father God, to be strengthened in our mind, bodies, and spirit. We lift up every person, Father God, that this broadcast will come across their, their, their phone, their computer, Father God, whether it's audio, podcast, whatever it is, Father God. We pray, Father God, that you touch the minds and hearts of the people to share this broadcast, Father God, for those who are in need. We ask that you please remind them, Father God, of those who need to hear these words, Father God, and let your word strengthen them, Father God. Let them learn to depend on you and the oracles of you, Father God. Let them seek you in the daytime with a flashlight that they never stop looking for you, Father God, in your ways. We thank you, Father God, that their faith will not fail them in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that the tool and device and the agent and the assignment of Satan over their lives, all of those at the, at the sound of my voice, Father God, and that shall come across this broadcast, that those assignments from Satan are canceled now in their life, Father God. And I release prosperity in you, Jesus Christ, in your holy will in their lives, Father God, on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name, we say, let your holy will be done in their lives. 
Father God, we thank you, Lord, for your mercy on them. Father God, for your grace, your compassion, and your forgiveness. Father God, we ask that you please forgive them of sins they committed, known and unknowingly, Father God. And we thank you for using me and Felicia, Father God, as your yielded vessels, Father God. And we thank you for unity. We thank you, Father God, that you have killed every assignment Satan has over our lives and our ministry. We thank you, Father God, for straightening out every crooked road. We love you, we praise you, and we worship you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. All right, guys, we thank you for tuning in to Unity Empowered Ministries. If you want to join us and you feel this is something that you would like to do that will help empower you and encourage you, we just invite you to go and like our Facebook page, Unity Empowered Ministries. If you want to be notified and get a text message to your phone, whenever we're moving, whether it's via Clubhouse, whether it's via Facebook, whether it's audio podcast, whether we got a book coming out and you just love our vibe here, we just ask you to please text Unity Impo, that's U-N-I. T Y E M P O. Don't forget the at symbol. So that's Unity and Pro at symbol to 81010. Give our club a chance to um, join your life and let us be the inspiration and the influences. Accept this offer because we were here, planted here <laughs> intentionally by the Father, Jehovah God to be yielded vessels, to be used and utilized for his purpose in your life. We wish you nothing but the best. Let today be the last day that you allow depression to win. In Jesus' name, we declare and decree it. Amen. Amen. Goodbye, guys. Until next time. We miss you, Latoya. Mwah.